The R base package contains hundreds of functions and you can get access to even more by downloading packages. The syntax on the fun of the functions uh, works in such a way that you write the name of the function then within the parentheses you provide the arguments that the function requires. A few functions that you have encountered previously are for example mean for the arithmetic mean value, plot for plotting things, the t-test and uh, you may also uh, define your own functions when the functions available in R are not sufficient or you want to repetitively perform some sort of task which could be made easier by defining the entire task as a function and then use this function and uh, we'll get back to that. If you write example and then the name of the function within the parenthesis you get an example or a few examples of the usage of the function and this is the same information that you would get access to by writing question mark in the name of the function the help text that is at the bottom of the help text there are a number of examples and these you can access directly by using the command example. Here we look at a few functions, just just a few examples of functions that you may have encountered previously, most of them. And we start by defining a vector containing the numbers 1, 5, 6 and 7. And if you write mean and provide as a single argument this vector then you get the arithmetic mean. If you write median you get the median obviously. Max gives you the highest value and min gives you the lowest value of the vector. And if you write SD you would get the standard deviation of the values in the vector. Each function has uh, a known set of arguments that can be passed over to the function to determine what it should do and these may be required or they may have default values so that you don't have to provide a value of your own if you don't feel like it. If you write args and the name of the function you will get a list of the arguments associated with that specific function because they may not always be easy to remember. They are also available through the help text of course. And if you provide the arguments to a function in the correct order, that is the order that they are listed when you write args, the order that R expects them to be provided in, then you don't really have to tell R the names of the arguments. It would be sufficient to just provide the values and they would then be interpreted as the first one value would be interpreted as the value associated with the first argument and so forth. However it's often useful to provide the names of arguments because it makes it easier to decipher the code when you look at it yourself. And if you for some reason would like to provide the arguments in a different order compared to the one that is expected by R then you would have to specify what the names of the arguments are. Here we ask for the uh, arguments of sample, the function sample, and we get this in return. Function and then within parentheses the arguments x which uh, would be an object containing the values that you are to sample from, size, the sample size, replace which also has a default value as you can see here. Replace equals false means that if you don't provide a value for replace then it will by default get the value false. So only if you would like it to be true you would have to write replace equals true. Prob also has a default value of null. Prob is the probability for each of the um, values containing x. So if we try to use this um, function sample we could for example write sample 1 colon 5 which gives us a vector containing the numbers 1 to 5. We want a sample size of 5. We want 5 numbers sampled from this vector 
and we write false here simply. This is interpreted as x equals 1 to 5, size is 5, and replace is false. And prob would get the default value null. And in return we get a vector containing the numbers in a resampled order. If we, for some obscure reason, would like to start with, for example, the size and then provide the vector followed by the probabilities and then replace, then we would have to tell R the name of the, of the argument because they are not in the expected order. But we don't have to provide the, the entire name. It's sufficient that we provide as many letters of the argument name as required to differentiate it from all the other arguments associated with the function. In this case, for example, s would be sufficient to tell r that it's the size because no other argument starts with s in this case. So it's interpreted as size. And we get this in return. Here we ask for the sum of x and we get 19. So that's a useful command and it's actually the same command as the plus sign although the plus sign is a special way of calling for this function. If we want to multiply a lot of values you can use the prod and the prod is the same thing as the asterisk which is to multiply with and you get 210 in this case. Which mean and which max are interesting functions. They don't give you the lowest and the highest value, which was what you, what you got if you used the min and max functions, but they rather tell you in what position these are. So which min x gives you 2 because the lowest value in the vector x is situated in position 2, two of the vector and which max gives you 4 because the fourth value here is the largest one.